deep brain stimulation, whatever you use it for, whether it's for a psychiatric uh, application or uh, movement disorders, it's a reversible procedure. You don't destroy anything. So if something doesn't work, then you can tone it down. You can switch the electrode contacts. You can change the shape, size, and scope of the electric cloud that you have created around uh, your, uh, your target structure. And this is an individual who's failed to respond to other, um, you know, to talk therapy, to medic all medications, uh, failed to respond to ECT. Point to bring out is that uh, folks that are getting these deep brain stimulation uh, uh, interventions are often people who have failed to respond to everything. They're still in the infancy. But he's an individual. Um, that um, I think you'd find would say I don't know if I would have survived without getting this this technology. Okay. So we've implanted several people with deep brain stimulation as well for obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, a unique thing that um, that happened relatively recently is we implanted a gentleman um, who had already had uh, two deep brain stimulation uh, electrodes for Parkinson's disease and also had, since childhood, very severe obsessive compulsive disorder. He, um, he'd had such good um, uh, efficacy or, or, or effect from the, the Parkinson's deep, deep brain stimulation that he actually um, was very aggressive about wanting to uh, treat his obsessive compulsive disorder, which was incredibly severe. We implanted him a few weeks ago, and he's actually the first person um, to have both uh, a, a Parkinson's stimulator in the subthalamic nucleus and then um, a obsessive compulsive disorder deep brain stimulator in the area um, near um, the nucleus accumbens which is the part of the reward circuitry in the brain and so this is a, a really unique and um, exciting case because uh, not only is he unique in the sense that he has two sets of stimulators for two sets of uh, diseases, but he also has, uh, he's the first Parkinson's patient in the world to have um, a deep brain stimulation electrode in the, in the nucleus accumbens, in, in the reward circuitry. Since this has never been done before, we really don't know if this double implant is something that is just of benefit to this one guy or whether the simultaneous stimulation of several target structures um, is better than the selective stimulation of a few. We're really monitoring a lot of things closely, certainly monitoring his obsessive compulsive disorder which was the primary reason for the implantation, but we're also uh, monitoring other things like his mood, and his Parkinson's related apathy, um, because this could be, a, you know, a really exciting um, time if we see improvements in those things. So we're going to be monitoring for all of that and really trying to capture everything that's going on with him as we program his device and, and treat him in the upcoming months. Then you have the whole idea, which is is uh, unverified, of will of one device interfere with the other device and if it does will it interfere in a negative way or in a positive way and uh, our hopes have been that either the two devices will not interfere with one another or that they will interfere with one another in a synergistic way sort of one is a turbocharger for the other his uh, test scores have improved since this was implanted and uh, this is a long-term project where you first start to tweak his his OCD electrode settings to try to optimize that and then you try to uh, create some crosstalk between his Parkinson implants and his OCD implants.